the AMD K62540 SuperSocket 7 platform. Let's begin this story by looking at what came before and we're going to start with the good old 386. The top 386 from Intel runs at 33 MHz and after some legal issues AMD was finally able to sell their 386 which is basically a clone of the Intel chip. However, AMD offered higher clock speeds and so the top 386 from AMD runs at 40 MHz and is a very popular chip for retro PC gamers. Following the 386 we got the 486 and motherboards with so many jumpers that you were lost without the manual. The internal CPU cache boosted performance quite dramatically and we also got clock doubling and tripling processors. Once again AMD offered higher clock speeds with up to 133 MHz whereas Intel stopped at 100 with the Intel DX4. Skipping a few sockets we arrive at the Socket 7 platform. A wide range of processors are available, not just from Intel and AMD but also chips from Cyrix, IBM or IDT. Intel had the Pentium and Pentium MMX with top models running at 233 MHz and AMD launched a ton of processors such as the K5, K6 and K62. Socket 7 is the last platform that supports processors from Intel and AMD. Intel couldn't wait to move on and launch the Slot 1 and later Socket 370 platform. AMD would eventually counter with the Slot A and Socket A but Intel beat them to the market with the Pentium 2 so AMD needed something competitive and they needed it fast. And that's how the SuperSocket 7 platform was born. Now I'm not 100% sure if there's a clear definition but for me personally it needs to have two things, a 100 MHz frontside bus as well as an AGP interface. Compatible motherboards come in the older AT as well as in the newer ATX form factor and are quite sought after these days. So this brings us to today's video and we are checking out one of the SuperSocket 7 processors, the AMD K62500. This processor was provided to me by Electromine, an online shop for used computer and electronics parts. Use the Phil's Computer Lab voucher for 20% discount on the entire stock. Details below in the description. In this video we will get to know the K62500 in more detail, run it through DOS and Windows benchmarks and compare it with a range of Pentium 2 processors. We will also look at PowerDraw, talk about the 3 d now extensions, memory type range registers and a lot of other interesting stuff. In the background we have Quake 2 running with the 3 d now patch for a bit of extra performance on K62 processors. Let's go over the specifications of this CPU. The full model number is AMD K62500AFX. According to CPU World, it launched in August of 1999 for a price of $169. The multiplier is unlocked and can be configured with the motherboard usually through jumpers or dip switches. The default configuration is 100 MHz for the frontside bus, a multiplier of 5x and a core voltage of 2.2 volts. Let's take a look at some benchmark results. A thousand words ain't enough to define the body up, body up, yeah. Got a look and she wants it back. She's firing up that body up, yeah, yeah. You think that I want you, but nah, nah, babe. You're one in a million, but it's not for me. I'm not into girls with a In DOS, the K62500 performance is all over the place. In some benchmarks it competes quite well with the Pentium 2, especially performance in Doom is very good, almost as fast as the Pentium 2 450. But if you want to play Quake, you are better off going with the Pentium 2 and high resolution DOS performance is also behind the competition. 
Now all these processes support the memory type range of registers. I've done tutorials on how to boost DOS graphics performance with various tools. Check out the links in the description for more information. Under Windows we're finding the performance to be more consistent. The K62500 matches up quite well with the Pentium 2 300. But once again all the Quake games don't do so well on the K62. However, GL Quake and Quake 2 are definitely very playable with frame rates of over 60 FPS. Power draw is quite interesting. At idle the K62 system consumes just 42 watts, significantly less than the slot 1 platform. However, under load the K62 surprises and power draw goes up by quite a bit. Only the slot 1 system with the Pentium 2 300 consumes more. Let's have a chat about the 3D Now extensions which are quite interesting. On the one hand, if used properly, extra performance can be extracted, especially for graphics intense applications. However, the 3D Now extensions never gained much popularity and support and so most games relied heavily on the standard floating point unit and unfortunately this was quite weak compared to the Pentium 2. Quake 2 is a game that is always mentioned because of a special 3D Now patch that was released. Looking at the performance, we can get a boost from 65 to 71 FPS, which is nice, but it's not enough to really change the outcome or conclusion of this story. Also worth mentioning is that graphics drivers can also contain 3D Now optimizations. The 3DFX Voodoo cards are often mentioned. For example, a Voodoo 3 is a very good card to match up with a Super Socket 7 machine, not just because of the 3D Now optimizations, but also because it works well with the AGP chipsets and is very compatible with games from that era as well. It also supports the Glide API, which a ton of games supported and run extremely well on the K62 processor. So looking at these results, it might seem that the story of the AMD K62500 doesn't end well. However, there's more to retro gaming than just pure performance. If you're building a machine that focuses on Windows 98 gaming and you're looking to play newer games such as Expendable, System Shock 2 or Half-Life, then I would advise you to go with the Slot 1 platform instead and choose one of the faster Pentium 3 processors. However, if your focus is on building a machine that can play DOS games as well as early Windows 3D games, then I do recommend that you should consider the SuperSocket platform and a K62 processor. The chip is very flexible and you can configure your motherboard to run it as slow as 133 MHz, which a lot of speed sensitive games require. You can also play around with the L1 and L2 caches and turn your retro gaming PC into basically a 386 or 486. I've done videos on such a build, the 4-in-1 and 3-in-1 retro gaming PCs, so if you want to know more about how this works, I will put some links down below in the description. So basically, if you play suitable games, then the K62 is a brilliant processor, but it does offer limited performance if you want to play the latest and greatest Windows 98 games with all the details and a smooth frame rate. And this wraps up this video review of the K62500. If you're eager to buy one, I just had a look on the Electromine website. They've got over 60 of these processors in stock for 10 euros. But do remember to use the Phil's Computer Lab as a discount code when you check out for a 20% discount. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like it, please consider subscribing to my channel, press the like or dislike button and share the video with your friends. Leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts of the K62 processor and how do you see it compared against the Pentium 2? Thanks for watching and I shall see you soon with another video.